to the parents of the Wall Street Journal reporter being held in Russia. And I don't know, George, you had a chance to sit down with them about the fight that they've had to free their son. That's right. We see his son right there. That's Evan Gershkovitz. His parents, Ella, Ella Milman and Mikhail Gershkovitz, came from the Soviet Union. They brought their children. Uh, they met here in the United States, raised Evan and his sister here in the United States. And right now, Evan, as you said, has been spending more than 100 days behind bars in Russia. There's no evidence for the charges that Russia said he's a spy. But his parents do remain hopeful that they're going to get him home. How are you? Holding up. That's uh, the best that we can describe. And how about Evan? What are you hearing from him these days? Well, uh, Evan is uh, writing letters. We have ongoing conversation. He tries to take care of himself. He meditates. He watches his diet. He exercises. He has one hour of walk outside of That's his That's his exercise? Yes. And I know in his letters home, he's maintained his sense of humor. Yes. Even teasing you about the breakfast you used to serve? Yes, my, my <laughs> cooking. <laughs> Tell me about that. He says that the breakfast in the Fertorval prison reminds him of breakfast at home. That didn't upset you? No. I thought it was funny, <laughs> you know, that I insisted on oatmeal, you know, that I, I thought it was very healthy. And now it's a uh, laughing matter. <laughs> Gershkovitz's parents, who fled the former Soviet Union in 1979, have traveled back to Moscow twice since Evan's arrest. And at a hearing in June, we're allowed to speak with him. We all saw that video of you speaking, yes. speaking to him. What was he saying? Joking immediately. He, it's my, uh, about my story. I share a lot of stuff like <laughs> that that make him laugh. When I see those stories about him joking about it, it makes me think that that's a gift to both of you. Oh, thank you. Uh, it definitely is. And we uh, saw him. If he wasn't in such strong spirits and uh, joking and looking good, uh, we, we wouldn't be able to stay as strong as we are. So I, I, I know that he put a lot of effort in supporting us this way, and uh, we have to do the same. Nothing that might even be taken as a sign of dissent is allowed in Russia right now. Gershkovich was detained by Russian security services in March and is being held on charges of espionage. Charges the U.S. and Journal both firmly deny. Evan has pled not guilty. Yeah, he considered it both a privilege and responsibility that he was accredited and that he was a foreign journalist, not a Russian, and he, could, he was one of few people who could report uh, honestly what he saw. Where a lot of people who were working there uh, cannot say as much as they did, so. You know, it's, you're limited in what you can talk about. Uh, but when you spoke with President Biden, are you confident that the United States is doing everything it can, the government? That's the only thing that we can uh, rely on and be hopeful. President Biden spoke to us and gave us a promise to do whatever it takes. He talked to us as a, as a parent, and he told us he understands our pain. We also met Secretary of State Mr. Blinken as well. He showed us his card with the names of all uh, wrongfully detained Americans around the world. Evan's name was, it, was on that list as well, and he promised to us he's not going to rest until all the names are crossed out from his card. Last week, confirmation of talks about a possible prisoner exchange. We saw the news last week that the Russians uh, came out and said that the negotiations have, have started, and the United States response was, we don't want to raise false hopes. That must have been a, a very difficult couple of days for you. It was, but, well, we understand that uh, they need uh, to do it in private. It shouldn't be public. We don't know much about it, but we're still, you know, very, very optimistic that um, it's going in the right direction. President Biden did say that uh, it's a personal matter for him uh, because of uh, his son and... Um, we uh, we take a lot of comfort in that's got to make a difference to hear the president yes. of the United States say that it does, and you believed him absolutely. Is there any message you have for the Russian authorities? Journalism is not a crime. We want our son back. Yes. You know, I look at this picture, and I see the headline "The Hundred Days," but what I see even more than that is a young man who's so open and curious to the world, what do you see? Exactly what you just said, you know. 
and uh, sometimes it's hard to see his face everywhere. And sometimes it's uh, uh, heartwarming that he's not forgotten, that people talk about him, that people care. And uh, that's nice to know. What's the first thing you're going to do when he comes home? Oh, I don't even know. I just wouldn't let him out <laughs> anywhere for several days at least. Yeah, when he gets out, his mom's not letting him go back to Russia. No, no, I don't think so. But it's good that, you know, even in the letters that they, they have the thing that she can kind of laugh about now and have some kind of comfort. Um, yeah, and that, that's one of the things I mentioned to them. It seems like, you know, he's very aware the, about making this easier for the people who love him uh, and by, by keeping his spirits up. And they're, they are quite hopeful that this is going to work out in the right way, but it's been a long time. And we know we've seen these things play out before. They take some time to come to some resolution. Yeah, but they do manage to remain optimistic. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you so much, George. Great job with that. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.